Bryant Denny Stadium here in Tuscaloosa. The number two ranked Crimson Tide play the New Mexico State Aggies on SEC Network. And the 13th season at the capstone for Nick Saban, and he's rewritten the standard in college football. Tua Tungabailoa is making his own history at quarterback in his own lane in the Bama record books. He has a quartet of talented receivers led by the explosive All-American Jerry Judy. It's the tie to New Mexico State here on SEC Network. And with Matt Stinchcomb, the College Football Hall of Famer, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang's on that steamy hot field. You'll see her in just a second. So you got a lot of experience that we just talked about. But we have some fresh faces here for the Crimson Tide this year on the field, on the sidelines, and in the press box. Ten different players making their first start for Alabama last week versus Duke. And it showed at times because the veteran presence at quarterback and at wide receiver had to overcome some of the youth that you saw on the field, especially for Alabama's offense. When you look at the number of new entrants, new faces, 14 true freshmen playing, and seven new coaches. So it's not just the guys on the field, but it's as they prepare for games that's kind of changed. A lot of turnover amongst the coaches as well. Yeah, and some of those new faces are on the offensive line. So how does that affect one of the best quarterbacks in America? Well, it's not always a clean pocket, and it's not also just the offensive line in the game versus Duke, you see on the edge, Alex Leatherwood gets the start at left tackle. This isn't really his bus. Really, the back is supposed to cross read. Jerome Ford's got to pick that up. Tua showing his playmaking ability, heading play by the quarterback. Nice push here by the rebuilt offensive front. Just follow your blockers. You've got a veteran returning running back in Najee Harris. Doesn't do a great job there. And then a bus with the new faces. So the offensive front compromising the Tide's ability to convert on a third and one, a tackle for loss. It took Tua Tonga by Loa, it took Jerry Judy and his colleagues at wide receiver to help pick up that offense last week versus Duke. Can the backs and the offensive line assert itself here today versus the Aggies? For more on Tua and the people in front of him, let's go to the field and Alyssa Lane. Yeah, you guys mentioned that offensive line full of new faces. So is the tight end room and so is a couple position groups when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, Shane Lee and Christian Harris, two linebackers who we weren't expecting to see start at linebacker for the Crimson Tide this year. Going into all those new faces, Nick Saban's focus this week, he preached mental focus, making sure his guys were dialed in, not taking any opponent for granted. Having those young guys, of course, 18, 19 year old guys wanting to make sure they are focused and ready to go. The staff certainly looking for a cleaner start than they had last week. And New Mexico State won the toss. They'll defer. Bama will receive 93 degrees at kickoff, 90% humidity as Dylan Brown will kick it deep to Trayvon, to Henry Ruggs, and Ryan Robinson. And it's fielded by an upback. Alabama will take it at the 25-yard line. Tunga Baloa, as you said, Stinch, made history last week in terms of completions. This man has the cheat codes, it seems, in the video games. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. Is that what it takes in Alabama? Because you saw it last week. He might have the cheat codes, and the wide receivers talk about it. They're seeing the defenses the same way. That's a dangerous proposition. When you look at the prolific passing numbers that Tua Tunga Vailoa is capable of putting up. Already a whistle. His referee is Ken Williamson. Sure, Winding far away. The play clock, yeah. Slow down the offense. Najee Harris standing back there with Tua. First and ten for the Tide from their own 25. Playing the Aggies for the first time ever. Make the Najee, and that's a pass out to Ruggs, who's got plenty of daylight. First play of the game. How many times have you seen this? 75 yards. Interesting note about that play, Stinch. It was called a rush, not a pass, as Tua threw it behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to kill his stat line. <laughs> Got to be disappointed. So Ruggs is the replacement now at running back. 
this season for the Crimson Tide. Will Riker, the true freshman, in for the extra point, and just like that, 7-0 Crimson Tide. Junior from Montgomery has 17 career touchdowns receiving. Now he's got one rushing. Take a look at these two guys. Devontae Smith and Jerry Judy. When we talked to Devontae Smith yesterday about what they're proud of in the wide receiver room, he didn't bring up route running. He didn't bring up their hands. Jerry Judy just kind of got in the way right there. He talked about blocking and how much pride did they take in the wide receiver room and seeing if they can't get knocked down blocks. He was disappointed with the new blindside rule because he wanted to decleat some guys. You see Judy, really more of a position, but look at Devontae Smith downfield. Physical, finishing. That's a point of attack. That looks like run block. So yeah, it was a backward pass. And so technically a run there for Henry Ruggs. Nice blocking out in front of those wide receivers channeling their inner linemen. And there's a debate up here with the official scorer on whether that was a pass or a run. It was first called a run, but we're going to take a look at this again. I believe the official scorer now is going to call that a pass. So we'll take one more look at it as Huntley watches the kick go into the end zone. New Mexico State will start at the 25-yard line. See him. He's standing on the 21 yard line. Yeah, that's a backwards pass. It sure is, because he caught that at the 20, but the official scorer is calling it a catch now, a pass. And that would be the longest reception of Ruggs' career. It seems his first thought was the right one. But he overruled himself, and now it's the longest catch of his career. It's early. He's got time to fix it. <laughs> Josh Atkins. At quarterback for New Mexico State, and he swings one out to Jason Huntley, and Huntley is met for a loss of one on the play as Diggs comes up to make the tackle. This is the unquestioned leader of head coach Doug Martin's team, and he's only a sophomore, and he was voted the team captain. Well, you can see why. You know, the coaches around New Mexico State really pleased with what they have at quarterback. Mentioned Mike Leach, the head coach of Washington State last week, felt Atkins could play in their league for sure. Again, the swing out to Huntley. And Huntley gets to the sideline for a couple to be third and long. Maggie's with Adkins and Huntley. Also a big time playmaker and wide receiver in O.J. Clark up there at a wide out. Huntley is on the senior bowl watch list. He's one of the best kick returners in the country. You can see already an emphasis to get him the ball, but to get it away from the line of scrimmage. They know that they are forfeiting size and strength up front. Get it to Huntley in space and turn him into a return man. The third and eight, Atkins barely has enough time, feeling the pressure from the Crimson Tide. First from Anthony Jennings, and it's a three and out for New Mexico State. And the defense on the field with Jennings getting the pressure. Next to him is Shane Lee, the true freshman in the middle of that defense. Yeah, and a guy that's going to spend probably more time than what we'll see in Christian Harris because they'll be in their dime package, their six defensive backs. Shane Lee will likely be the lone linebacker in there oftentimes. A true freshman had to slide in there and be the signal caller for the defense in Dylan Moses' absence due to that ACL. And Heisler punting to Jalen Waddle. Waddle hasn't put a hand up, so he's coming towards the Aggies on this one with a flag down. And he gets to the sideline. Got a cavalry in front of him. And again, a flag down as Waddle will take it all the way to the end zone. Seven-yard return for Waddle with a punt return for a touchdown against the Raging Cajuns last year. Now this one's coming back. Carrying the return, blocking it back. Receiving team, number 28. Two-yard penalty, first down. That's Josh Job, the defensive back, who had a couple of pass interference calls go against him last week. So the tie will be back on offense. They've only had one play so far. Tua to Ruggs to the distance. Tied already on top. Crimson tied with the home opener at Bryant Denny Stadium against New Mexico State. Oh, Mehmet did not score in two of its 
last three games in the first quarter. Look at the difference the rest of the game last week once the quarter hit number two. No trouble today as they've already have a touchdown. And now Jerry Judy's open in space, staying in bounds. First down up near the 29-yard line for the All-American from Deerfield Beach, Florida. All kinds of questions about the offensive line stench. Bama played four centers last week. Now Landon Dickerson starting at right guard last week versus Duke, starting at center here today. After the high snap, Najee Harris takes it across the 30-yard line. He's starting at center in part because Chris Owens was questionable going into the game. He started there last week. Owens not expected to play today. Dickerson, of course, has only been in Tuscaloosa a month. Transfer from Florida State. At least the jersey colors are somewhat similar. Right? Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have known where he was. So he looked around and saw the talent that was in the locker room with him. Under center to a faking down Harris. Has to step up with pressure. And he throws a low ball that's dug out by Devontae Smith. And Smith's past midfield. It's another Bama first down. Good job there by Tua Tungavailoa. We saw this last week. A little bit of pressure. Had to work the pocket. Off balance throw. Look at that hands catch. We asked Devontae Smith yesterday, what's the best part of your game as a receiver? He said, I got great hands. Showed it there. 22 yards on that play. Now quickly to Ruggs. And Ruggs is ahead to the 45 yard line. We're still having a debate up here about whether that was a pass or a run to Ruggs for that touchdown. And they are now saying it was a run for Ruggs. So it's a 75 yard touchdown run. For Henry Ruggs that started the scoring here today for the Crimson Tide. Here's what I know for a fact is it was a catch. <laughs> Argue the rest of it all you want. Nice run after the catch, as it were, too. It's something that Coach Wiggins, the wide receiver coach here, says, I'm not going to coach you on that. We don't have to with this receiver team. Second and eight, it's Harris. Straight ahead. Much running room there as he's met by a collection of Aggies at the 44 yard line. Marvin Hartfield that was the first to greet him. Well, they're being active up front is New Mexico State, and they're without their best player. Their interior nose tackle, Roy Lopez, out with an injury. They're saving him for later on in the season. But a couple of rundown stunts, confusing the blocking scheme up front, some loose hats right there at the point of attack. Yard line to Devontae. It's another Alabama first down. See the accuracy from Tua Tonga Vailoa. But once again, bodies landed right around as he's delivering the football. Takes a little bit of a shot there towards the end. You want to clean that pocket up. You see Matt Womack right there, number 77. Starting at right guard, they've reshuffled, as we mentioned, the interior offensive front. That time, New Mexico State able to get there. To a deep ball. Almost picked off as the closest man to it was Ray Buford. It'll be second down as a flag now comes in. The neighborhood Personal where Tua threw it. Targeting number 10 on the defense. The previous play is under review. Cedric Wilcott. So we'll take a look at this. What's called a targeting penalty, and if it stands, of course, Wilcox is out for the rest of the game. Watch Wilcox, just a spin move. And big Jedrick Wills at right tackle. Let's go back to the studio. Matt Austin, our rules analyst. Matt, what did you see here? Well, I'd like to see another, another shot of the replay from a different view. It didn't really look like there was much contact high. It looked like he got him in the shoulder to me. Uh, this, this might be a better view. It looks like he comes in. It looks like all the forcible contact is to the, the shoulder pad. Uh, I don't see any real attack. Uh, he is defenseless, but I, I really don't see a high hit. I, I'd be, uh, I'd be shocked if they could, if they stood or stood with this call. And, and Matt, this is part of the new process, right? Because right now you throw a flag on the field, and then the targeting foul is officiated by the replay official here in, in Bryant Denny, correct? With the luxury of seeing it from all the angles. That's exactly correct. Fight. Yeah. That's right. They start with pretty much a clean slate. They can do whatever they want to do with it. Replay official today, Mickey Haddock. The observer is Daniel Boldrick. 
TV liaison to Tom Danner, and of course back in Birmingham in their phenomenal command center led by Steve Shaw and the rest of the Southeastern Conference crew. They'll certainly have every single look at this play and see if the call on the field stands, if Wilcox, in fact, is thrown out or... After back further in. review, there is no foul for targeting. It's second down. Mr. Austin got it right, so Cedric Wilcox still allowed to play the rest of this one. And without Roy Lopez, Cedric Wilcox is their best defensive lineman. That was a nice spin move that he worked on Jedrick Wills to be able to get right up field, get into Tua Tungavailoa's face, forced a bad throw, but a clean play by number 10. I like this change to how the targeting foul is being officiated. It makes a ton of sense. Let number 10 keep playing. So now a second and 10, and the handoff to Brian Robinson, and Robinson around the left side is met out of bounds by Lomax after about a gain of eight or so, so it'll be third and short. And also, Javon Ferguson is on the sidelines. This guy led the country in tackles last year, and he's got an injury to his left hand, and you see he's got a little cast that he's wearing underneath that glove, I believe, today. So he's limited as well. Yeah, minus a playmaker like him, a sideline to sideline type of player. We just saw an outside run, now a third and two. On the red zone fringe. Robinson, the big bruiser, plows for that should be a first down for the Crimson Tide, local product from Hill, Hillcrest High School, 226 pounds. And we're all wondering, Stinch, who's going to carry the mail for the Crimson Tide this year when they play LSU, when they play A&M in Auburn with the loss of Josh Jacobs and Damian Harris? Yeah, and Trey Sanders, right? A true freshman, lost him due to injury, a guy that they thought might be able to carry on the mantle. Najee Harris, the top returning, burning running back. They need him to run with a little bit more toughness. Good job there by Robinson of picking up the yards needed to convert. The 21, clean pocket for Tua to the end zone, touchdown! Jerry Judy again. With that throw, Tua goes over 5,000 career passing yards. The eighth Alabama quarterback to hit the milestone. And for Jerry Judy, it's his 18th touchdown catch. Pretty efficient, those two guys. When you look at it last week, Tua Tungabailoa, a career high in completions. It was a career high in receptions for Jerry Judy with 10. 14 zip with Reichard's extra point, and you see the passing yards for the junior from Eva Beach, Hawaii. Hooking up once again with one of the top wide receivers in all of college football, Tua to Judy, touchdown Alabama. Already. 14-0 Alabama over New Mexico State after Jerry Judy, with 10 catches last week, gets his first touchdown in T-Town as a junior. How about Tua Tungavailoa's numbers when number four is on the field? They look different. It's almost like he gets even better. A really good quarterback, almost doubling his QBR when Jerry Judy's on the field, and you can see why. A special player among special players at wide receiver. and tied and Huntley lets it bounce into the end zone so Ruggs has already gotten his touchdown run after a catch but watch Ruggs he's just going to run across the defender's face he's going to pull that defender out wide watch Judy he's right here in the slot he's kind of dead leg at the top top and you see the defender where are his eyes the defender was had his eyes in the defensive back an offensive backfield rather Judy kind of slow plays it off the line, then bursts to the corner. Ruggs' route pulls the defender outside, away from the potential throw. Easy pitch and catch for a quarterback and his favorite receiver who are very much in sync. Christian Gibson in at tailback, and he takes the football and moves up near the 29-yard line for a pickup of four. It's second down. We've been talking about the fresh faces for the Crimson Tide. Shane Lee, number 35, the true freshman 
in there for the Tide. The freshman from Burtonsville, Maryland. Dylan Moses out for the season, injured in practice. Josh McMillan also out for the year. This guy pressed into action, played well against Duke in his first game. It was a really clean game. A true freshman starting versus a power five opponent, and Duke, the quarterback, and they played lights out. They opened up in the flex bone or wishbone look, something they didn't anticipate. The inside linebackers for Bama did a great job. Tackle on fourth down in the first quarter. Second and seven, pocket collapsing for Atkins. He gets rid of it. That's a first down throw to Drew Dan for the Aggies. Let's go back to the studio and our good buddy, Dari Noka. Boys, thank you much. How about AM Clemson? Big third and 15 for the Aggies. Late first quarter, Kellen Mond swing pass to Cameron Buckley. Gets inside the 20 for a first down. Drive results in a field goal. Three zip Aggies in the second. A big one that we'll be paying close attention to throughout the afternoon. How about that Michigan Army? Afternoon. How about that Michigan Army game? Unbelievable overtimes today before the Wolverines survive. Fumble to end it. Otherwise, oh man, you talk about the Big Ten taking a pin. Wanda comes away with that one. First down to ten. Gibson is up near the 38-yard line where he's tackled by LeBron Ray and DJ Dale also in on that play. Raquan Davis, as you see, big-time defensive lineman. D.J. Dale, the co-defensive lineman of the week, he's also a true freshman. Just another in a long line. You know, last year, coming into the season, it was, golly, how are they going to replace De'Ron Payne? Well, they had a kid named Quentin Williams. He was pretty sporty on the defensive side of the ball, went third overall for the New York Jets. Days for a lot of offensive linemen and coordinators. And now D.J. Dale stepping up, plays great with his hands, with good leverage inside. Bam on the blitz, quick screen to Huntley. And throws the wheel up near the 45-yard line, where it'll be third and short. That's where New Mexico State's going to make their living today. And it makes a ton of sense, right? Get the ball outside to Huntley. He's a guy that can play in space. See if you can't maintain some possessions. You're down two scores. Doug Martin, who's the head coach and also play caller, he gets what he's up against here today. Try to see if you can't move the sticks. You've already gotten a conversion here. Maintain this possession. Of course you want to score, but you also got to try to keep your defense off the field. Atkins just has to throw it away, and it's fourth down. Terrell Lewis pressuring Atkins, and Raquan Davis was back there too. This guy's going to be a menace. Terrell Lewis, eyes on number 24 watching. Just going to win on an inside rush. Almost right now. See that quickness? And it ends up really looking like they were trying to run a game. He was so clean up into that gap. He ends up getting upfield. Raquan Davis was going to work outside, it looked like, in a gap exchange. Davis would have been the contain rusher. Lewis is the inside rusher. 6'5, 250. I give him 6'6, 265. I think they're cheap. This punt, he barely gets off the ground for Theisler. Just plays some keep away from Jalen Waddell ends up at 37 yards. Bryant-Denny Stadium. The best winning percentage in all of college football at home. Held by the Crimson Tide. Already up two touchdowns. In the Nick Saban era, Alabama's receivers have been all Americans. Julio Jones, the number six overall pick just signed a massive contract with the Atlanta Falcons yesterday. Amari Cooper statistically is the best receiver in the history of the program. And Calvin Ridley was a first round pick just over a year ago, each having a 1,000 yard receiving season. Cooper had a couple as Harris takes it past the 35 yard line. Of course, Jerry Judy adds to that a collection, Alyssa. Judy's one of those guys that I think is the envy as far as wide receivers go of the rest of college football, right? I mean, he's super speedy, he's super quick, very athletic, and who better to find out how good the wide receivers are than the secondary they go against every day in practice. Trevon Diggs said that they feel like they're one of the best secondaries in the country just because of the level of wideouts they go against every day in practice. Yeah, could you imagine? You talk about iron sharpening iron. When you get there to game day and they're finding out the DBs, they were saying, look, you know, sometimes we don't even play the ball right in the air because we're in phase. We're step for step with the receivers we're playing on game day. 
we're usually in recovery mode a lot of times. We're out of phase in practice. We got to remember we can play the ball in the air because we're actually at where the reception's intended to make. The toughest competition they're facing is Monday through Friday. After a couple of Harris runs, it's third and four. And off his back foot, that is an incompletion as Tua was looking for Jalen Waddell in fourth down. Alabama's receivers already a big factor as Ruggs catches that swing for 75 yards on the first play with Devontae Smith blocking. A touchdown pass to Jerry Judy as well. All four of the Crimson Tide receivers as a unit, hard to top in all of college football. And they've all got incorporated in the offense, not necessarily with catches. You think of Devontae Smith with the fingers catch and a nice block earlier as well. That was Skyler DeLong punting. Will Riker did it last week. But DeLong punts here, and that's 38 yards. And Aggies get it back. Dangerous with his legs, rolls to the left and throws. 30 yards later, finds Justin Ross. Clemson leads it 6-3, pending the extra point. He went down to the wire, Dari, in College Station last year as Clemson hung on one by two points. This might be the stiffest competition the Tigers see all year. Look what happened to Syracuse oh, earlier today. Might be, yeah. Syracuse got cut it by Maryland today. They were ranked 21. Won't be next week. They were ranked 21. Won't be next week. Excuse me, O.J. Clark makes the catch there. That's a loss of one on the play. It'll be second down. Shane Lee was there to make another tackle as the Tide's already up 14 zip. 14 true freshmen played for the Crimson Tide last week with 10 new starters. Second and 12, it's Huntley. And he has no place to go. It's third and long. Good luck. In the middle of that Alabama defense, Raquan Davis, the first to him. It was interesting talking to the coaches yesterday and how the defensive front needs to play some of the zone schemes. You'll see a lot of it. It's a spread offense, an air raid type offense at New Mexico State. And how oftentimes you'll see some of these zone runs. They run it opposite where the back is lined up. The defensive front has to cancel gaps because you've got so many defenders out of the box. They're doing a good job of stopping the run early. Atkins throws behind his intended target, Clark. It's another quick three and out for New Mexico State. So watch this. So here's Terrell Lewis again right here. They're going to work, work a little delayed game. Watch him kind of pop up, slow play it, and then come inside. Keeps it nice and clean. They're going to run a lot of twists, a lot of stunts. They're good enough to win one-on-one, -on -one, but you also want to hone some of that, how you work with the adjacent linemen, especially on games and twists. Punt away from Waddle again. Good job by Feisler, and this goes inside the 20-yard line. Marked down near the 16. It's a punt of 55 yards. Coming up tonight, 7.30, it's our Saturday night matchup as Arkansas travels to Oxford, take on the Rebels. Then on SEC Network Alternate Channel, we have Eastern Michigan versus Kentucky. To find the SEC Network Alternate Channel, go to secnetwork.com. Razorbacks and Hog and Rebels. Remember, the Rebels came way back in that game in Little Rock last year to win. And you may be thinking, Eastern Michigan, Josh Pascal had to block a punt against EMU two years ago in order to beat the Eagles by less than five in that game. So who knows? Maybe a good one there with Eastern Michigan tonight. Everybody in the SEC paying attention after what Georgia State did to Tennessee. Two up, just a bit too long for Judy, second down. Got him just a hair. No, you're, you're right. You see some of these teams, the way they start, somewhat slowly. We just talked about Syracuse. They ended up losing big time to Maryland. It was 63-20, to 20, the final. How about that opener? in the conference for Mike Loxley, the former offensive coordinator here at Alabama, now head coach for the Terps. 
That slow start for some of the SEC teams is going to leave some opportunity for some of these other conference teams to squeeze in the top 25. To a quick throw to Judy up near the 19-yard line, and Coach Saban has used what happened to Tennessee last Saturday as a teaching tool, saying after Georgia State's victory, nobody thought that the Panthers and Sean Elliott, who won two games last year, were going to go into Knoxville and come out with a win. Everyone should pay close attention. He even referenced what happened here in 2007 with Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, yeah, he, he's going to use it. He's going to try. i got to tell you, it's a little bit of different circumstance here at Alabama, I think, than, than what we're seeing with some of these other programs. 2007 was a long time ago. Through two receivers, and it's almost picked off. Judy and Waddle had a hand on that, and so did Shimon Lomax. It's fourth down. Drop by Lomax. He ended up closing, but that ball just kind of bounces off Judy. Three straight targets by Tonga Vailoa trying to get the ball to Judy. He came off, ended up looking like Henry Ruggs was underneath that route, or Waddle rather. He disrupted. A little bit of Judy's concentration, otherwise that's likely a completion. How about Frank Spaziani in New Mexico State's defense forcing back-to-back -back punts against this offense to Long with a flag down. Much better kick, fair catch after a 41-yard punt. There's Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator for New Mexico State, former head coach at Boston College, has been great friends with Doug Martin for a number of years. In fact, Doug was his offensive coordinator at BC. So in turn, he came out to Las Cruces to call the defense. That's a couple of penalties now. We got a knock in the back earlier. Job with another penalty on punt team. Punt return, now punt team. Yeah, Spaziani. You know, he was the defensive coordinator at Navy right before Saban got there, and Saban was talking about, I think, did he end up buying Spaziani's house? They did live together, I think, for a little while as Spaz was trying to get out of Annapolis before he went to Charlottesville. Underneath the connection the two of them share as Atkins is alone in the backfield on a first down. He's trying to run away from D.J. Dale and throws it into the sideline. So in 1981, Navy defensive back coach. Look at Spaziani in that hair. Still has the same mustache. See, 38 cool. years ago. And then the following year, Stench, middle of that photograph, there he is in the back. That's Nick Saban. How about that? We stole Spaziani's hairstyle. <laughs> Didn't steal the mustache, though. Uh, he was only there for one year, and I, I asked Coach Saban, I said, did Spaz leave you any players? And he got a big laugh out of that, and he said, it's really hard to coach Navy players. The problem is, is when you're getting after him, there's a fumble down there. Let's see if Alabama came up with this. It is, it's Alabama's football. Saban said, when you're coaching those Navy players and get after them, they always say, yes, sir, all the time. It's hard to, they have too much respect for you. <laughs> he said, stop saying, yes, sir, yes, sir. I want to be angry. Watch DJ Dale. It actually looks like he came from the weak side. Dale had him wrapped up, but it looks like, I think it was Xavier McKinney who came in there and raked it out of there. Shane Lee with the recovery. So if you look at it, that's two forced fumbles by the Alabama secondary on the season. So 10 last week, forced a fumble, recovered by Tra Trayvon Diggs. This time, Defensive backfield mate, Xavier McKinney. Spaziani's defense in a little bit of trouble now as Harris tries the edge, and he gets up the five-yard line, five yards to the 45. You mentioned Trey Sanders, the true freshman, breaking his foot in August. Harris and Robinson both suspended due to disciplinary reasons in the first quarter of last week's game. Came on and both played well. Jerome Ford started last week for the Crimson Tide. Plowing again ahead to the 41. It'll be third and short. Trying some of those interior concepts. Downhill runs. That time, Harris would have done well just to follow his pulling guard. Matt Womack, number 77. Over there from right guard. 
a little bit more of a concerted effort to keep this ball on the ground. Upon a couple of possessions, you get a quick turnover. And on cue, right up the gut, goes Harris inside the 30. It'll be marked out of bounds near the 22-yard line. So it's a 19-yard gain for Najee Harris. Watch Alex Leatherwood at left tackle. He ends up blocking two on the edge. See him right here? Watch him. He'll block the defensive end first, and then I'm going to take this off of you, too. Just enough. You see Devontae Smith again doing work downfield as well at wide receiver. Ryan Robinson now in the spell. Najee fake to him, and it's incomplete. Batted down. Steve Sarkeesian is the offensive coordinator. He coached the national championship game after Lane Kiffin left in 2017. He was the Atlanta Falcons offensive coordinator the last couple of years. And as you said, a concerted effort to be multi-dimensional on offense this year. Well, and we asked them why. You know, because they were piling up yards last year in the RPO-oriented offense, but the problem was when you face a Mississippi State, an LSU, a Georgia, a Clemson, those defenses can take the RPO throws away from you. Robinson has got no place to go. He'll lose yardage. And he's back near the 23-yard line as Jamias Williams made the stop. Penetration upfield by Jamias Williams. Great job. A lot of ball handling involved on that play. The snap was a little high from Landon Dickerson. It can throw the timing off. Good job by Williams getting upfield quickly and diffusing that run play. They're going to try to get downhill again in the center of the Aggie defense. Big 95 wasn't having it. Tua gets this off before the end of the quarter. He does. Third and 11 all day. End zone. Touchdown. Guess who? One of the best ever at wide receiver for the Crimson Tide, Jerry Judy, 23 yards. You said it all day, great protection. You can't stress a secondary. I don't care who Alabama's playing for that long. You got a clean pocket. Two is able to buy time. Just kind of sliding around in the pocket before he finds his favorite target, Jerry Judy, and another Alabama touchdown. That's a great recovery on a third and 10 plus after a tackle for loss in the backfield. And Riker. Makes it 21 nothing at the end of the first quarter. Jerry Judy with his 19th career touchdown as he is now tied for second all time in touchdown receptions. And with it, Tua Tunga Bailoa throws his 60th career touchdown pass. So here he is again. Watch him work his magic. Jerry Judy. This takes a little bit of time, but breaks right in front of the defender's face. Tua with a little bit late delivery, but great placement. Keeps it away from the defender. Touchdown time. Jerry Judy moving up the record books in Crimson Tide history now with his 19th touchdown reception, giving the Tide a 21-0 lead. Check out some other scores. Go back to the studio in Dari. Yeah, Taylor, a bit of a surprise right now in Athens. Of course, don't expect it to hold, but Georgia taking on Murray State. Eli Wolf catches the pass, gets hit. The racers recover. Georgia has since gotten it back, but we are late first quarter, 7-7 between the hedges, Jeff. Uh, upset alert. Racers all right now. Come on. Well, that Plenty needs, of time. That needs to make the bottom crawl on the all the ESPN channels. Upset alert in Athens. Too early for that. But I'm sure Kirby Smart is paying close attention. And how about this? Down to the ground goes Atkins as Anthony Jennings comes around the edge for a, his seventh and a half career sack. Wow, what a great get off by Anthony Jennings. He jumps his count. Look how quickly he's moving before Jalen Guerrero is. That is a winning recipe as a pass rusher. Look at this, and look at the strength. That guy does more damage 
with one arm at a time than any other outside edge rusher I've seen in a long time. 6'3", Loss of seven on the play, and that gets his time. He throws up past the 30-yard line to O.J. Clark, the speedster at seven catches last week, and now it's third and manageable for the Aggies. O.J. Clark was a little bit frustrated on the earlier possession. It felt like he had an opportunity to make a catch over the middle, didn't like the placement. Week one was a primary target versus Washington State. Just didn't get going early enough. Those third down numbers, the Aggies looking for their first conversion, and they'll try the sideline, and it's Christian Gibson. The original indication looks like it might be enough. No, that's really Martin short. And so it'll be fourth down. Yeah, yep, stepped out of bounds prior to that 35-yard line, so now New Mexico State 0 for 4. We're just waiting for the Aggies. Might as well try it. You see the horizontal passing game. You've seen a ton of it, especially the screen game, wide receiver screen game. We were talking with defensive coordinator Pete Golding yesterday. He said, we're just waiting for it. A little screen and go. Try to get the secondary leaning downhill. Haven't seen it yet from the Aggies. Will Waddle get a shot? It's going to bounce in front of him, and he's not going to be able to field this one either. So Feisler doing his job playing keep away from Waddle. It's a punt, 39 yards. Out with the statues. Coach Saban's got his as his tide's up three touchdowns. Bryant-Denny Stadium, constructed in 1929, capacity 12,000. By the time they got to 1966, they'd added end zones, and capacity was up to 59,000. In 1988, they added a west side upper deck and some spiral ramps as well, so they got it to 71,000. But still at that point in 1988, Alabama had a big game. They were playing it at Legion Field in Birmingham. Auburn, Tennessee, Penn State, Notre Dame. Homecoming, weaker opponents were played here as Tua finds Ruggs, and Ruggs is past midfield, and he's out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. But massive additions were made through the years. In 2006, the North end zone upper deck and club level made the capacity 92,000. And by nine years ago, it was over 101,000 people in this place. And now it's one of the best atmospheres anywhere. I guess. I mean, still no air conditioning? <laughs> A little hot, a little warm today after that big catch from Ruggs. Now Brian Robinson takes it inside the 25 yard line but boy do they have an advantage in this place look at their winning percentage the best in college football pretty remarkable you talk about this fan base they're out here cooking to watch this game the 831 win percentage here that's pretty darn impressive it's not just numbers right it's how the fans engage in the game you, know, you hear it so there, there it is first down everybody chants roll tide the fan engagement these folks get it and they can impact the outcome of games with their involvement as you said this is one of the hottest games this stadium has ever seen look at the temperature and what it feels like 103 degrees as Robinson's up to the 20 Alyssa it's got to feel hotter than that down there yeah guys it feels a lot hotter than 103 down here that's for sure I can say the equipment staff is working absolutely over to her time as far as restocking with ice they've got some contraptions that the guys are wearing on their heads that are like those things that you dunk in the water and then they feel really cold so I'm trying to find myself one of these on the sidelines but I did talk to the head uh, team trainer before the game today asked if they did anything specific as far as hydration he said nope it's just something we've been working on all week long preparing for the heat out here today legal substitution offense number eight in the formation five yard penalty second down you know those things will drive coach Saban crazy but they've taken all kinds of precautions today as there's extra water stations all over the stadium. They said, look, if you're hot, go to the concourse. And I'm looking right now, the concourse is packed around this place at the moment. Plenty of refreshments as well on the sideline. 13 Aggies at least momentarily looked like they were coming it to up. Making the play clock all the way down to three. 
to throw the home run ball. And slings this one down to the sideline. It's incomplete for Judy. It's third down. Let's go back to Dari in the studio. Uh, yeah, you got it, TZ. Georgia fans can uh, breathe a little easier now here. Brian Herring in from two yards out. 14-7 oh, dogs over Murray State. There you go. Just a little deep breath there. If you're a Bulldogs fan, 21-7 now. UGA on top. Didn't play their best in the second half against Vandy last week. Just had a huge game with Notre Dame coming up. Prime time in a couple weeks is New Mexico State calls timeout. Clemson tied so far in this one, making quick work with the football today and already up 21 nothing in this football game. Coach Saban said you cannot think about the opponent today. You have to think about your own standards. So far, so great. Yeah, it looks good. And you talk about the wide receiver position and how it's asserted itself. Now you've got a new offensive line line up once again. Chris Owens not able to play there in there at center. Landon Dickerson sliding over from his right guard spot. There have been some hiccups from a protection standpoint. The run game at times has been spotty. But the playmaking ability of the Alabama offensive skill position, it is not a bridge at all. It's not even impacted, really. Even the special teams, we saw a near punt return for a touchdown brought back due to a block in the back. There have been a couple substitution penalties. These are all things that can be cleaned up and ironed out. Defensively, it's largely been smothering a pretty solid performance and one that you would have anticipated coming into this game. 14 runs, 14 passes. And they're balanced. <laughs> Perfectly in fact. Sure to be broken on this play. Third and 13, and Tunga Bailoa throws the runs. And after the catch, he gets up near the 10-yard line. It's going to move the chains, too, after a 15-yard gain first down. I love these wide receivers at Alabama, man. They, they, once they make the catch, they're running backs. It's like they got a running back mentality. New Mexico State brings the house. You come out there, hit rugs on the stop route, and then he just lowers his pads, running through tackles, picking up three and four yards after contact. Alabama look as they get near the goal line. We've seen Ali Keho, the defensive player, come in as they get inside the five. Won't have to worry about that this time. Just a pitch and catch with Ruggs for his second touchdown. Alabama doesn't need any help. Confusion in the coverage. Ruggs breaks free inside. He could have hit Miller Forstall. His tight end as well out in the flat. Would have walked in. It was dealer's choice that time for Tua Tunga-Vailoa. Couple of protection changes at the line of scrimmage. They've done a good job relatively on that drive, giving their quarterback time to deliver strikes. Ruggs and Judy are changing the all-time touchdown marks for receivers today. We're gonna have to update that board for you as Judy's got two and Ruggs has one receiving and one running. Tonga Bailoa working those eyes, sees the defense, knows where he wants to go, fires one into Ruggs, six points. We got it. Always stabler in, in T Town, my friend. Yeah, there's sure. one snake. Plum, uh, Plummer, certainly the man out in the desert. In the desert. Jake Plummer just kind of fell off the earth, didn't he? No, I think he's still on the planet. Is he still somewhere? I've lost track of him. As uh, Christian Gibson past the 25-yard line for a few. Second down. All these fresh faces for the Crimson Tide on defense. With Christian Harris and Shane Lee at linebackers. You see Shane there and DJ Dale now playing nose guard. Second game of their careers. Some of them pressed into action due to injury and dismissal as Huntley is ridden out of bounds by Lee just past the, the 30 yard line. Just over a week ago, they thought Dylan Moses would be the anchor of this defense. So unfortunate this injury that'll sideline Dylan for the entire season. Combine that with Joshua McMillan and the dismissal of Ayabi Anoma. Alabama's a little thin with depth 
in the middle. Yeah, McMillan goes down, an inside linebacker, a senior. They knew Dylan Moses could probably take up the slack. That's until he blew out his knee. When we talked to Coach Saban, when's the last time you had three true freshmen down the middle of your defense? He couldn't think of a time. And they've got true freshmen that can play early. 35, Alabama was off sides here. It's a free play for Atkins. It looked like a defensive back came across before the ball was snapped. Offside, defense number seven. That penalty will be declined. Result of the play. Trayvon Diggs here stands at the bottom of your screen. I see him, right? You think he was going to try to jam him? He couldn't wait. Ready to throw a punch almost right before that snap. Trayvon Diggs, we visited with him yesterday. Stefan Diggs, little brother, a hamstring issue for the Minnesota Vikings. May or may not be able to play in the opener. They talk every day, Trayvon said. Catch is made by O.J. Clark. It's the first down up to the 50-yard line. Alyssa, how are those true freshmen looking so far in their Bryant-Denny Stadium debut? Yeah, guys, you were talking about having three freshmen just right in the middle of that defense there, nose guard D.J. Dale, and then, of course, Shane Lee. One thing that I think Alabama fans could take solace in is a lot of people would be very nervous to have three freshmen starting right in the middle of your defense. Pete Golding said those guys are in his office ready to go over things after practice before he's even gotten out of the shower. Terrell Lewis said they were over at his house the night before the Duke game to go through signals, make sure they were right. So these guys ready to come in and get it done early for this Bama defense. Yeah, those guys, you know, you think Shane Lee and Terrell Lewis, the same high school, there's Pete Golding. What a ballistic rise in his career. Two years ago, coordinating the defense at UT San Antonio. Just underneath throw, in stride, catch made in, just near the 35 yard line by Tevis Abraham, and that's another first down for the Aggies. Sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with that catch, and the connection that Golden is making with these young guys has been impressive. We haven't seen a lot of Christian Harris today because Alabama's almost exclusively been in a dime package, just one linebacker on the field. Tackle made there by Terrell Lewis, who's almost always on your screen. Wins inside again. Watch him stem right now. You got an inside run, you got to deny. That inside move, and Terrell Lewis, he's got a full bag of tricks. That 24 is sneaky. It makes it look like he's smaller than he is. That is a big man. One-on-one -on -one incomplete. Shaheen Carter had the best chance at that ball. Senior defensive back from Kentwood, Louisiana. The coaches talked about it. You know, how do they get those in-phase plays? When you're a defensive back at Alabama and you're not always in position versus your wide receivers, Pete Golding and the Trayvon Diggs both mentioned, it's something that they work on. There's a period where they work on it just so their DBs know what it feels like. That time, Shaheen Carter with an opportunity to turn it over, didn't come up with a catch. On third and 12, lofts one, picked off. Patrick Sertan. Just like his father, one of the more heralded defensive backs coming out of high school, lived up to the billing last year, and is off to a hot start in 2019. Tied, get the football back here in the second quarter. History of SEC football is chronicled in our eight-part documentary, Saturdays in the South. Tuesday at 9 Eastern, episode two will take you from the Great Depression through World War II and into the 1950s. Saturday in the South, only seen on SEC Network and the ESPN app. National champions in 1930, Wallace Wade, 44-41, Frank Thomas, 34 team had Don Hudson, and that man that's got a statue outside, Paul William Bear Bryant. Excited to watch that first one was fantastic. How about the history of Southern football and the Sewanee Tigers? Yeah, the Purple Tigers. Winning five games in six different days in 1899 they did a great job chronicling that that's some aggressive scheduling that would definitely warrant a playoff consideration at the end of that season can you imagine 
Second and seven to a Tunga Bailoa. Easy throw to Jalen Waddle, and he gets past the secondary up near midfield. Now, I don't want to play favorites with the wide receivers here at Alabama, so don't let them know that I said this, but Jalen Waddle, I enjoy watching him with the ball in his hands, maybe more than any of them. Not that the other guys can't handle themselves, because they have, but it's like he's just got another gear. He's a great return man. We saw it earlier. He just squirts through that second game. Why would you not want him to know that he's so the other guys? I want the other guys. Get all jealous. 29 yards. There's two of them. He's showing these wheels off in the first couple of games as Harris makes the catch up to the 40-yard line. And there are no lingering effects with the knee for Tua. He escaped the pocket numerous times against Duke last week to avoid the sack and showed the wheels off there. Moving well and delivering it to what is said to be a really good receiver out of the backfield of Najee Harris. Something that Coach Saban went out of his way to point out. Only had four catches a season ago. But what a great receiver number 22 can be for the time. Go to Judy. Right near a first down marker at the 30 yard line. It's easy money. Really soft coverage. It's an easy access throw. Well, in the opener, Tua looked out there, thought he had a quick now pass, just stand up, flip it out there. Judy was thinking something else. Probably one of the few times we've ever seen number 13 and number four not in sync in the passing game versus Duke there, dialed in. His first half numbers. As Najee plows forward to the 25-yard line. That's the kind of run they want to see out of 22. Just lower your pads. Run downhill. Don't try to bounce everything to the outside. Everything doesn't have to be a home run ball. You're a big body, man. You're talking about a 6'2", 230-pound runner with wheels, great hands. Use those pads. They give them to you for a reason. That was a nice run. It wasn't an electric run. It's second and five. Man. Backfield. Najee there down near that score bug at the bottom of your screen. Look looked that way, nothing was open, he takes off again, and watch this, all the way to the house. 25 yards. Tua probably has Henry Ruggs for a touchdown, but the pocket wasn't that clean. There was a breakdown in protection. He does, do what he does best, really. And that's not hold, although he's pretty good at that too. Tuck it and run it when the protection breaks down. Reichert makes it 35 nothing. Tua doing Tua things. Pressure, nowhere to go with the ball. Why don't I tuck it and do it myself? Crimson tied 35 to nothing. See it happen. Chiz and CD working out of the same closet, I see. Yeah, CD? I don't know. I mean, they both worked out a lot. Receivers have elected to put the ball in play at the 35 yard line. First down. Well, two is scrambling a little bit, and we got some issues at guard. Left guard and right guard are going to end up getting edged by the rushers of New Mexico State. Evan Neal, a true freshman, watch him. Gets his eyes stuck inside for too long. Bodies around to his feet. He decides to tuck and run. Not a bad option for the Crimson Tide offense. 25 yard touchdown run. His first rushing touchdown of the season. He's got eight now in his career. Of course, everybody remembers that 44 yard scamper in Baton Rouge on one knee, I might add. He's got two of those now that are working properly. Even more dangerous. There's Raquan Davis. Kind of comes and goes at times, but so far so good for Raquan for two games this season. Definition of a space eater. Big body, long, 6'7, 310, occupies blockers, doesn't always shed blocks as quickly as some of his other defensive line mates, but he gobbles up space. About made the tackle, would make that uh, McKinney about made the tackle twice there. It'd be 
third down. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Million Dollar Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Those guys, the fans. Man, do you think those feathers help the heat escape their bodies faster or something? Like it conducts the heat upward? I know heat rises. I have no idea what feathers do to the heat as it rises. It's probably not even real feathers. On a third and eight. Atkins. Pocket collapses and so does he. That's LeBrian Ray with the sack. It's fourth down. Just nowhere to go with the football. You can only imagine throwing into a secondary, and this is a really good one. Where are you going? Where are you going to go with this ball right here if you're Josh Atkins? There's nowhere to go with this football. You look downfield, it's just a matter of time. Your protection is not going to hold up long anyway. And LeBron Ray taking advantage of the coverage downfield, pad his stats for this contest. Eisler. This is fielded by Waddle, who is standing about 15 yards closer this time. Desperately wanted a shot. Now he's going to go to the other sideline. Now watch out. He's got a cavalry in front of him. And he'll run out of bounds just outside the 30-yard lines. He ran, oh, what, 60, 70 yards to pick up about 20. Yeah, I mean, the width of the field, what? Just north of 50 yards. Nobody went close to 100 yards right there. Watch where he catches this, right? So he's on the numbers. So he's going to run other, all the way to the other numbers. So, you know, I'm going to give him 50 yards right there. Spin. Let's run another 50 yards at least. That's 100 yards. That's a gasser. He ran a gasser. Doesn't look like he's out of gas, though. Yeah, he doesn't even have oxygen on over there. That was like a warm-up. Two up. It's incomplete to Judy. Second down. Judy covering up that throw. Looked like that could have been a backwards pass. It's been a live ball. <laughs> we saw earlier, Ruggs ended up being a backwards pass on the touchdown run, quote-unquote. First offensive play that ended up being just barely a forward pass and a completion. Rug, no game. Rug's still the rushing leader in the game. 75 yards on that one carry. Two up. Home run ball again. Too far for Terrell Shavers, sophomore from Louisville, Texas. Not sure about that read by Tua. Maybe got a little bit greedy. Mexico State had a middle midfield safety ready to play that thing underneath. Ended up double coverage there in the end zone. But taking a shot downfield. I hadn't seen a ton of those. Not a lot of shot plays. We asked some of the players, even Coach Sark, going to be calling those shots, those downfield shots. They said that they were called. Just the defense took it away from them versus Duke. This one in the line of scrimmage. Just let Judy create. And he gets upended. At the 30-yard line by Ray Buford. Nice open field tackle. It's fourth down. What was it? When we talk about these receivers turning into running backs, Ray Buford, great job coming up, making a tackle versus a receiver that is incredibly difficult to get on the ground. That's Judy. He went with a, He tried to do the dead leg right there, just kind of dead leg him a little bit right there at the edge. So it sets up a fourth down, and Will Reichard, he was 0 for 2 last week. He hit the right upright from 49 and the left upright from 48. Coach Saban is big on this guy. He's got a cannon for a leg. And from 47, he makes his first field goal as a member of the Crimson Tide. He was just sighting in his scope last week. Yeah, you hit the left one, you hit the right one, OK. I got it good and dialed in. Maybe I overcorrected. Who drills this one? This is you at the driving range, isn't it, buddy? It, it is. I just don't know where it's going to end up. I don't know why you use your foot in golf. It's so strange. Coach Saban was the first guy to...
pat him on the butt last week when he came off the field. He said, I just love how much distance this guy is getting on his kicks. Get both uprights, it's not the worst thing in the world. If you're wa way off, it's one thing. Alabama's obviously struggled in the kicking game for years, but they think they have found their answer with this true freshman from Hoover, Alabama, who's also kicking, and he, has, and he punted last week too. Skylar DeLong is doing that today. They're asking him to do a plethora of things in his first year in college. over Huntley. Now, Coach Saban got all fired up after an interception last week, and it drew a uh, personal foul on the Alabama bench, and then one on him for jawing with the officials, and he said Miss Saban, Mrs. Terry, I should say, got on him after that. Did you have to do any extra running this week because you got 15 minutes to the game? Uh, Miss Terry made me run on a tre treadmill for 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> The, the leadership group had a meeting and they wanted to implement some disciplinary action, but um, it, it kind of got overruled. <laughs> what about the old veto stamp, huh? <laughs> First and 10 run goes to Gibson for a couple. You know, I like what he said, though, after the game. He was upset because he said, let the kids celebrate a little bit. They weren't jawing at Duke. They were celebrating with each other. But he did say he got a little too worked up, and he this is the first time in a long time that he's drawn a personal foul. I just like that. So he overrules the leadership group, but didn't even try to overrule Miss Terry. Terry no. right? Get on the treadmill. Smart, smart yes, ma'am. It's a veteran move right there. 20 minutes is a long time. I wonder how far he went. 20 minutes on the treadmill. I'm going to say seven miles an hour, maybe the average speed, somewhere in there. On well, that new hip. Yeah, that's right. So this is going to talk to him in just a second. Is that, I thought that might be the last play of the first half, but. Clock has stopped momentarily, and now we'll wind it back up. Crimson Tide scoring at will in the first half on the first play. Henry Ruggs went 75 yards, and that guy, Jerry Judy, already with two touchdowns. As the Tide is rolling here in T-Town in the home opener. Tua Tunga Vailoa with 222 yards passing and three touchdowns in that first half. Finished up with Will Reichert's first ever field goal from 47 yards out. Grand total of 38 nothing, and Alyssa's with Coach Saban. Coach, a couple of quick touchdowns for your offense. How would you evaluate their performance this week? Well, I think we started out fast in this game, which is something that we wanted to do, but we kind of lost a little bit of our intensity and didn't execute as well. But, I mean, you can't complain about scoring 38 points, but... You know, I still think we're not as sharp as we need to be in the passing game. Your defense as well, some three and outs, an interception. What did you think of their performance? They've done well so far. You know, we're playing a lot of just five guys in the box and split safety coverages, so we don't give up anything. And the front's done a really good job of stopping the run, so we don't have to put an extra guy in the box. Thanks, Coach. It includes a lot of fresh faces on that defense, helping pitch the, shoot the shutout. It's 38 zip here in Tuscaloosa, Crimson Tide on top. Now it's time for the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report with Dari Noka. It is rolling in its home opener in Bryant-Denny Stadium. 38 zip over the New Mexico State Aggies here on SEC Network. Let's take a look at our Star Watch for today. Brought to you by State Farm. Jerry Judy to a Tunga Bailoa. All the receivers, Tunga Bailoa hitting in stride today. This was just a ridiculous throw by Tonga Bailoa. Seems somewhat pedestrian, and then later on, ends up tucking and running for his own rushing touchdown. He played a role in the first touchdown scored in this game. Actually had to throw what looked to be a pass, ended up being a long handoff, we'll call it, a backwards pass. 14 of 22 for 222 yards. 
that's pretty sporty and spreading the football around. Ruggs getting in there, Judy getting in the end zone a couple of times, and Tonga Vailoa also contributing on the ground. What more do you need out of the quarterback position and the wide receiver spot? They're blocking like crazy. They're running the football. They're completing passes downfield. Maybe Tool will snap it to himself. <laughs> I don't know what else he's going to have to do in the second half. What about that new offensive line and some fresh faces on defense for the Crimson Tide today? Yeah, they've looked great. And especially when you talk about controlling the box up front, you've got new faces, a true freshman, and an interior defensive tackle spot. And, of course, Shane Lee playing that Mac linebacker position in a lot of the dime packages, doing a great job of shutting down one run offense. The Aggies have been able to get going. It's been an impressive half of play. Mexico State gets the football first. Saw two of his numbers in the first half with those three touchdown passes and one rushing. Might see some Mac Jones, you would think, in the second half. And who knows, maybe even Talia Tunkabailoa came in in the fourth quarter. Doug Martins, New Mexico State Aggies. Down 38 zip at the half and trying for the first touchdown here in the third quarter. Atkins 11 of 17 passing for 60 yards did throw the interception to Patrick Sertan in that first half. Handoff goes to Huntley and he's ahead for a couple. Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I caught up with head coach Doug Martin coming out of halftime, and he said he told his offense, hey, we got to cut down on the turnovers. He wasn't happy with the turnovers in the first half. He told his defense, hey, we need to force some turnovers. Not unhappy with how his guys are playing, but saying if they want to have a chance, the defense has really got to get in there. It's in his seventh season. Went to a bowl game in 2017, first time New Mexico State had played in one in 57 years. They won, too, beat Utah State the Arizona Bowl two years ago, but being an independent program is so difficult as you have to travel all over the country and play some of the best teams. Huntley staying on his feet, still not tackled past the 35-yard line. Speaking of that travel stench, they're all over the grid. Look at that trip to Wazoo, then to Alabama. Going to play Liberty twice, by the way. They have a home and home with Liberty this year. I wonder if that will involve a dental chair. First and 10. And that is incomplete. Now, they're funding their entire athletic department by playing games like this against Crimson Tide and then playing Ole Miss later this year as they played a couple of SEC schools on almost an annual basis. Didn't play one last year, but have two this year and have one on the schedule. As you see, each of the next three seasons will be back here in Tuscaloosa in 2021. Yeah, you know, payday games. And as you mentioned, you look at it concentrated, you know, across most of the southeastern portion of the United States. We're talking with Doug Martin. He was saying, you know, we need to play games. Dangerous especially when you've got a defender like Shaheem Carter bearing down on you. But we mentioned not being part of the conference. They don't have to share with other members of the conference, quote, unquote, but they do have to share the funding across the athletic department. And they would love if they could retain the revenues that they obtained from one of these, quote, unquote, payday games just for that football program. Haven't been able to accomplish that this year. We saw that on the screen, the first ever meetings, kind of remarkable that New Mexico State, then New Mexico A&M started in 1894. Alabama started playing football in 1892. Yet the teams have never met until today. Third and 13, good throw, but catch is not made by Tony Nicholson as Sertan might have got a hand in there. Yeah, well defended by Sertan, you're right. You, know, you would have thought by now that these two programs would have met, especially given the circumstances that we just described financially. That, uh, not on the slate coming up either. When you look at spreading it around the SEC. Almost taking a tour. Fourth down, Peyton Beisler will punt. Now Alabama has made an adjustment with Beisler's short punts with Waddle as the up return man and Trayvon Diggs back deep. Diggs waiting for a fair catch, but somebody got in his way, and a flag is thrown. So while this is marked down near the 12-yard line, it's going to be a 
flag after what was a 55-yard punt. It's been a little bit of an adventure on punts today. An illegal substitution, a block in the back, bringing back a touchdown, and now another flag here. Interference with the opportunity to catch a kick. Kicking team number 20. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And here comes Tua in the third quarter. Yeah, I don't think we'll see him long. Go into halftime, push the fluids a little bit. See his numbers. Very efficient. And this is, you know, kind of, this is what he does. He doesn't play outside the third quarter, but he's got to maintain the trend of actually playing into the third quarter. <laughs> well, maybe part of the reason why is what Coach Saban told Alyssa that just before he went in the tunnel is he wants to see a little more improvement from his first team offense, particularly that offensive line featuring three new starters. Trying to figure out who his best center is too, Ryan Robinson. Breaks some tackles initially and is ahead for maybe a yard. Mexico State with a rundown stunt. So they just got an end and a tackle exchanging slow things down at the point of attack clearly trying to run to the right side of the offensive front robinson gets stacked up tries to redirect he picked up a couple of yards robinson just past the 50 yard line how would you assess the offensive line play so far today uh, you know it's been up and down i'm not sure that we're seeing what this offensive line is going to ultimately look like I think we won't see that really until the Ole Miss contest when Deontay Brown comes back. We'll assume, I think, what I would guess, that right guard position. We'll have to watch and see how Landon Dickerson does, who, as you mentioned, didn't get to Tuscaloosa until August, a grad transfer from FSU. You know, as he found a home at center, and then Evan Neal, who was a highly touted five-star tackle, who's gotten both starts at left guard. So maybe that's what we end up seeing at Ole Miss, but I don't think we've got the personnel available for the offensive line just yet. Dante Smith short of the first down, as you see there, about half a yard. Tied offense staying on the field to a under center is just going to plow forward. An easy first wow. down for the Crimson Tide. Following those man eaters. You know, last week, and Coach Saban mentioned this. They had a second and one right before the first end of the first half. And the back just doesn't see the hole. It wasn't even a hole. It didn't even ride the wave. It was a surge. And then they had a third and one, and they had bad blocking on the backside, and they get blown up. They ended up having to punt it away and gave up a field goal. You want to see those situational blocking, the rundowns. You want those reps. So you saw it there. You get a quick snap on a quarterback sneak smart makes sense maybe hold your breath a little bit because it's your QB running into traffic but that was a great surge but again you know these guys up front we don't we're not seeing I think what we'll ultimately get from the Alabama offensive front the only thing that they're forfeiting is game reps together until Deontay Brown gets back if in fact he comes back at right guard that chemistry is hard to develop just in practice Second and seven, Robinson cuts it inside, and he's inside the 30-yard line. And how difficult is that to get chemistry with these guys? Evan Neal, if in fact he plays left guard, and Brown, after the Ole Miss game, is your right guard, and Dickerson's your center. Well, takes a few weeks. It does, and you have to have a good feel for how the guy next to you is going to play. And when you've got new faces in new places, that's hard to get established. Down run for Robinson with Mac Jones warming that right arm up on the bench. Yeah, it makes sense. Get him in there eventually. But you know, like right now, Jedrick Wills, only guy who's playing in the same position he was a season ago. Otherwise, nobody's played next to each other. And right now, you can see Alabama kind of getting the run game going. 195 yards. Now let's remember 75 of that was to Henry Ruggs on what was a, a backwards pass over 20 for two on the touchdown run and it's robinson it'll be first and goal bama inside the 10 at the eight good patience by brian robinson good job by the front covering up and getting some movement 
you got Alex Leatherwood at left back playing next to a true freshman. They've never done that before. And the true freshman's playing next to a grad transfer and Landon Dickerson, who's playing next to Matt Womack, who's usually in there as an extra tight end and spent time at right tackle. Najee Harris back in after Robinson has gone the whole way on this drive. Inside handoff, Najee breaking a tackle and scoring. Simple inside read, pay dirt. Harris turning on the Jets. And he had to outrun some penetration. Watch this on the back side. This is going to try to be a cutoff block by Evan Neal. He doesn't get his hat across. So you see that? It makes Najee Harris. He has to bubble his run just a little bit. Those are the little things that you have to clean up. Versus New Mexico State, you can get away with it. You're faster than everyone on the field, probably. Reichert has been perfect kicking extra points and field goals today. And it's Najee Harris escaping the tackler in the backfield. It's 45 0. Last week, it was a tough week for some teams in the SEC. On Thinking Out Loud, last Monday, we had grief counselors there to help you through your pain. Who knows what we'll have this Monday? Join me, Greg McElroy, and Marcus Spears on SEC Network Monday at 7, 7 o'clock. Like I said, you'll never know what you're going to get, but oh, I can guarantee wow. it'll be fun. Wow, you're on the screen now. How about that? And appropriately in front and overlaying those yeah. two dudes. You can't even really see McElroy and Spears back there. I like that. That is fantastic. I can't see it, so yeah, this you is need very to exciting for me right now. Really I, I don't know what it looks like, but I can't wait to watch the replay. I mean, basically, <laughs> we just had, as you saw last week, the picture of McElroy and Spears. Now we have inserted you blocking the view of those two. Wow. I give you all credit for that because you guys called it out last yeah. week when we were at Kentucky, so I appreciate you guys playing blockers for me there. And, and Alyssa is saying she is a uh, South Carolina Gamecock alum, so she was sitting on the couch last week after the loss I to was. the Tar Heels. Yes. Gamecocks. It was, it was a tough time, but thankfully my mediocre grief counselors in Greg and Marcus sort of talked me through it, but but not really because they should not quit their day jobs for sure. <laughs> nice end around run for Drew Dan there. Gamecocks win your alma mater 72 to 10 today against Charleston Southern. Ryan Walensky now the quarterback for the Gamecocks through two touchdowns, pass, two touchdown passes, and you would certainly think Stinch, he's your starter next week against the Crimson Tide. Especially given that injury to Jake Bentley. Liz Frank fracture in his foot. Those things are nasty, take a while. And Holinsky acquitting himself well in his first start. An amazing story in and around him, not only as a player, but his family. As you see the type of day that he had, 24 or 30. That's really efficient. Look at the numbers that he put up and was a Highly regarded recruit as a pocket passer. Drop there by Warner, and it is second down. It's been through a lot, obviously, with what happened with his older brother, Tyler, at, at Washington State, taking his own life a, a few years back. And uh, Ryan wanted to go and have his own experience across the country and into SEC territory and played so well in the home opener. Nick Saban's never won in Columbia. Some Tide fans remember what happened there in 2010. Nice pitch and catch across the middle of the field and breaking free is Tony Nicholson and he's inside the five yard line as Diggs prevents a touchdown. It's a pickup of 44 yards. Took out an official too. Yeah, got an assist for the umpire. Got his glasses off and his hat. Watch this. Run right at you. Boom. Great job run after the catch. Tony Nicholson doing a great job getting it down in the red zone. At the end, and that's Trayvon Diggs. And he's probably cramping up. You see him working on that left calf, hot out here. First time, I'm actually surprised that this is the first instance we've seen of this type of, uh, of a cramping, given how hot it is. 
Let's go back to the studio with Matt Austin, our SEC rules expert. And Matt, how about when an umpire gets taken out like this in the middle of a play? Well, now you know exactly why I'm not an umpire. <laughs> uh, he, he, there's no, he has nowhere to go. The, the play runs right at him. He's, there, there's nothing he can do. Uh, it's unfortunate, but these plays happen, and you just hope that nobody gets ser seriously injured. Wally Huff, I know that you've worked with through the years. Seems like he's okay. Josh yeah, Wally's Jones. a tough one. He's going to bounce back up, I guarantee it. And <laughs> he got hurt. He got hit last year and was bleeding and still got up and finished the game. So he's a tough one. Josh Job running into Wally there. And yeah, Trayvon being carried off the field. His mom, Stephanie, is here today watching him play. They're hoping that Stephon can play for the Vikings tomorrow with that hamstring injury. We're going to watch it together. All right, now the Crimson Tide defense will try to protect their own goal line. And on the handoff, it's Gibson, and he'll fight ahead to the four. It'll be second down from there. You see Raquan Davis in there on the play. And Christian Harris in there as well. We've talked about these young linebackers, number eight was a safety, a defensive back. Did a great job on that last play. There's Shane Lee right here in the middle. See him redirecting. Quarterback keeper right at Lee and Harris, and they say, no, sir, it'll be third and goal. You just said it. Harris was a defensive back. You look at this guy. He was 6'2", 240 from Baton Rouge, and he's playing defensive back in high school. You think you'd want to catch it over the middle with him playing safety? I would not. Return kicks, play a little receiver, what an athlete. Pressed into service, though, as we've mentioned, due to those injuries, Josh McMillan, a senior, Dylan Moses out, Shane Lee and Christian Harris taking up the slack. In an empty backfield, Atkins surveys the whole field, throws it out to Huntley, makes a man miss, and into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Aggies. see Tony Nicholson there congratulating Jason Huntley. It was his effort. He did a great job. We saw an umpire going down to set up this red zone possession. And let's see if Huntley gets in. Looks to me it's hard. You're a little bit obscured there. It looked to me like the ball would have broken one edge of the goal line before his knee touched down. Will the score on the field? Penetrates any part of that goal line. It's a touchdown. It's been confirmed, and Dylan Brown's extra point is good. And the Aggies are on the board with 5.59 to go in the third quarter. Well, we talked about Jason Huntley at the top, one of the best return men in the country. Get the ball to him in space, and he's finally able to get the Aggies on the board with the tighter are up, 45-7. Hey. Yeah, well, so what a difference a year makes, right? You think AM comes in there and give Kellen Mond 430 passing yards a season ago as you see Mac Jones for the first time here today for Alabama. Mac throwing behind Jerry Judy. It's incomplete. Just to make to clarify here, uh, Tua Tunga Bailoa has not played in the fourth quarter and 11 of his 16 fourth quarter starts. So most of the time you don't see Tua because the Crimson Tide has such a big lead. And you know, something that offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian kind of alluded to where he said, I liked in some ways that there was adversity versus Duke in that first quarter, scoreless first quarter. We want to see him be able to overcome that adversity. Be able to do that. Second and 10. It's this one in stride to Waddle. It's a first down into New Mexico State territory. Alyssa, tell us a little more about this fiery sophomore quarterback. Yeah, guys, I actually got to watch Mac Jones play a lot of high school football in Jacksonville. I worked there for several years. He went to the Bowles School, and he led them to a couple of state championships. He was one of those players in the Jacksonville area that you just knew if he was taking the field for Bowles that Friday night, they were going to do something big. He was always lighting up the scoreboard. He was a really fun player to watch, and when he committed to Alabama, everyone in the area extremely excited to see what he would be able to do for the Crimson Tide. Now sitting behind, of course, to a tongue of a hook. As he straight ahead gets up near the 40-yard line, and Coach Saban said he's got an incredible understanding of the offense 
and has been impressed by his talent. You got the impression that Mac will have a real shot next year to be the starting quarterback. Well, he's certainly been around enough, and you've got to have some level of consistency. Now, I would like to think that the coaching staff won't turn over quite as much as it has in previous years, certainly the previous two seasons at the coordinator spot. You want that consistency at quarterback. Avoiding the sack there, Xander Yarborough was in the backfield, almost got Jones before he got rid of the football. We consider the wealth of talent that's around Mac Jones. And we've talked about some of the new faces, some young guys contributing. Look at that, he's got to work on that visor, man. Spray some Windex on that sucker. You won't be able to see where you're throwing it. Third and three with Judy in motion. The handoff goes to Harris. He moves the chains inside the 35-yard line. We've been talking about all these fresh faces, primarily on the field. How about on the sideline and up in the press box? You got seven new coaches here in Tuscaloosa this year, and Pete Golding has moved from the inside linebackers coach to the defensive coordinator. Yeah, you know, some guys that have been familiar with this program before, Sal Sanceri and his second tour of duty here, same as Steve Sarkeesian, who came from the Atlanta Falcons, along with Kyle Flood, the new offensive line coach. So there's familiarity amongst those coaches. Monte Smith, look at him changing direction there. And it's first down inside the 20 down to the 19. Pickup of 14 yards. Alabama offensive staff, you see there on the sideline with Steve Sarkeesian as the offensive coordinator did call the one game, the national championship at the end of the 2016 season, January of 2017, and a bunch more up there. Kyle Flood, the O-line coach. Charles Huff now coaching the running backs after Bruce Burns did such an amazing job. And the wide receiver coach has got to be smiling as Holman Wiggins watches Jerry Judy plow in the, for another touchdown. Keep this up. We're going to have to do a QBR rating for Mac Jones. Jerry Judy on the field. Jerry Judy off the field. Touchdown. That's his favorite receiver, too. So now he goes ahead of Calvin Ridley for second alone in touchdown receptions. And we're just into the second game of Jerry's sophomore season. 20 in his career as Reichert makes it 52 to 7. Uh, Mac Jones, RPO action, stabs one in there to Jerry Judy, dances around a little bit just to make it interesting. And he's in the end zone again, 52 for the tie. Mac Jones throws his second career touchdown pass. It's the third for Jerry Judy today, and you see he's climbed alone to second all time in most touchdown receptions. Henry Ruggs only a couple behind with four tied for fourth now. First time Jerry Judy's ever had a three touchdown game. This on the heels of 10 catches last week against the Duke Blue Devils. Coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern, it's our Saturday night matchup as Arkansas travels to Oxford, take on Ole Miss. Then in SEC Network alternate channel has Eastern Michigan versus Kentucky. Find the alternate channel, go to secnetwork.com. Razorbacks beat Portland State last week. Rebels lost to Memphis in the Liberty Bowl, 15 to 10. Ole Miss did overcome a 17 point deficit to win that game in Little Rock last year. Who are you liking that one tonight? Rebels or Hogs? Ooh, man. I can't say that I chewed on that one very much. I'm going to go with the Hogs. Man, Rakeem Boyd, pretty special player. Took nothing away from Scotty Phillips. What about Texas LSU? I like LSU. You know, when you look at what LSU's doing offensively, sure, it's, it's looking better. There's no doubt about it. Opening things up, Joe Brady coming over from the Saints. A lot's been made of that. Well, we saw it actually manifested on the field in week one. That's encouraging. 
I think that they can push on it. I think that they can build on it. Oh, maybe on Mitchell coughs up the football and it's recovered by the Crimson Tide as Josh Job has it. That ball was punched out. And it's that kind of thing is why I like LSU versus Texas. It's the 96th turnover force by the Bama defense since 2015. 96 of them. Three today. It's big Phil Mathis coming in there to punch it out. I know Patrick Sertan was in there too. How about that for a cover down from the big man? Cover down. Oh, man. Who do you give it to? Is it Mathis or Sertan? Like Mathis's left hand got he there was before a reason, Sertan's yeah. punch. Just for the effort. Can you, you share a forced fumble? Matt Jones, incomplete. I don't know. Second down. Can you have a completion on a run? The answer is yes. Jaleel Billingsley was the intended receiver there, a backup tight end for the Crimson Tide. who started the Duke game last week is in there at tailback and takes the handoff. Let's go back. Watch this hustle play. Here's Mathis right here. He's playing defensive tackle. Defensive end right there. Lined up over the offensive tackle. He gets in his pass rush. Watch this cover now. We've seen some great hustle plays this year. That's a pretty darn good one. It's downfield. Ten, he lines up out there. He didn't have that far to run. Big Phil Mathis get that big body moving out in space to force that fumble. More true freshman on the field for Alabama. Pierce Quick, Darian Dahlcourt on the offensive line, giving time for Jones, but Jones almost had that picked off by Lomax. Jones took a shot right after he delivered that ball on a rope. Ended up receiving, going down. Earl Shavers, he got tangled up a little bit, went to the ground. It's always dangerous, especially on those slants. Receiver goes down. That ball's still coming in there. There's a chance for a DB to make the play. Well, we know Reichert's got plenty of leg after watching his attempt so far this season. This from 50, actually officially from 49 yards. And this one is straight through. He has found his stride now. Boy, look at the leg on Riker, the freshman from Hoover, makes it 55 to seven. And against Sam Ellinger in the running game for Texas tonight. Yeah, and they do a great job. You know, Ellinger, a big contributor in that running game, not scared to scramble. He's a physical runner, can finish those runs, pick up hard earned yards. But I like the fact that both those quarterbacks do an excellent job of protecting the football. And in this game tonight, I think that's going to be the difference. And I think that's the difference from the LSU secondary's perspective. Takeaways. Flag comes in as Chris Allen came around the edge. Sophomore from Baton Rouge is Coach Saban has piled up the talent from Louisiana on this roster. A lot of great players. Shift, offense, number 16 and number 9 were moving at the same time and did not re get reset for a full second. That penalty is declined. Second down. So Chris Allen with that sack, which will count. It's a loss of five, and now it'll be third down. New Mexico State having to get up to the 35-yard line. Atkins lost one up, but too far in front of Warner, it's fourth down. So New Mexico State goes back to the bench against one of the best teams in college football, a program that has reset the standard with all programs, with those five national championships that Coach Saban has won in his, now his 13th season coach here at Alabama, the Dean of SEC Coaches. Running again to Waddle. He's going to have a 
chance at this at the 35 yard line. It's so difficult to bring this guy to the ground. His legs never stop moving. And he's out of bounds near the 41 yard line. So who are the teams in the SEC this season that can contend with the tie? We each have our own list. We have the dogs at the top there. You think the Aggies are right there in the mix. Now this was made before the Clemson yeah, game today. You know, uh, timing is everything. <laughs> I, I would say though that, you know, when you look at A&M, when they pick them up, middle of the season, they get a bye week. Maybe they show up. Look, last year, they were able to play over their head. Georgia looks to be like they're gonna be able to dispatch the Murray State Racers today. And of course, you know, look at Alyssa. Well, I like those picks, Alyssa. That makes a lot of sense. Just a reshuffling of what I was thinking. You know, everyone in the production meeting can be witness that I did not know your list before I was asked for mine stint, but I'm kind of with you. I think A&M could give Alabama a run for their money. You know, I did not think that this uh, Clemson matchup would be exactly how it went down, but I look at LSU as one of those teams, too, looking at Joe Burrow and then the defensive side of that ball, specifically LSU's secondary. I think they're one of the more complete teams in the SEC, but I would think if any year could be the year, this might be it for Georgia. This might finally be the year that Georgia could get a win over Bama. Again, those are the other teams other than Alabama that can contend. There's a personal foul call, and Keelan Robinson takes the handoff, and he's got daylight. See ya. 74 yards for the true freshman from D.C. Hope he stretched before he got in the game. You get out there, he hadn't played a whole lot. Nice and hot out here. Thankfully, the shades kind of crawled across the, the field, so everybody's in the shade now, at least on the field. Keeping Robinson showing the Jets. Hit that hole, you bang your head on the goalpost. Two carries last week for five yards, and he comes into the game, one play, 74 yards to the house. The picture of efficiency. I mean, he got hit more on the sideline in celebration than he does on this run. Watch him. And I like this hole. Sticks that right foot in the ground. Daylight. Nice blocking up front. It's been a long game in New Mexico State. There have been some quick scores. He's been on the field a lot. Defense getting tired. And Elon Robinson coming in there and fresh legging them. See over there celebrating with former Tennessee head coach Butch Jones on the sideline. Elon Robinson, just another among a talented stable of backs. Somewhat unproven. Brian Robinson's got some carries here today. Ran physically. Najee Harris, of course, a known commodity. Elon Robinson, a guy that's getting touches early in the season. 512 yards for versus Duke last week. 595 yards today we're not even at the end of the third quarter and 312 of that has come on the ground two long runs 75 yard run for rugs and a 74 yard run for robinson this is joe bolivis who was the kicker last year who's kicking off for the tide New mexico state starts at the 25 yard line Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in-store pickup that's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in-store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. Keelan Robinson enjoying Alabama's 62-7 lead here over the Aggies near the end of the third quarter. Gibson is met at the line of scrimmage. The legendary Eli Gold, the voice of the Crimson Tide for over 30 years. Let's listen to his call on the radio as Robinson got free. First and 10 from the 25. Here's the handoff to Keelan Robinson. Big hole, turn on the afterburners. Does he have enough to go? 20 down the right side, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Keelan Robinson. 
Robinson, 74 yards, a touchdown on his third carry of the year. That is what that man brings to the table. When that afterburner kicked in, nobody was going to get him. You can't teach speed, and that's it. He just We think. Fourth quarter in Tuscaloosa for the home opener for the Crimson Tide. 62-7 to seven lead over New Mexico State. Let's go back to the studio with Dari. All right, guys, thank you much. Don't forget our next game coming up on SEC Network is a conference game in Oxford, Mississippi. Ben Hicks and the Razorbacks coming out the win against Portland State. Taking on Ole Miss. Rebels got to find a little offense and try to slow down Raheem Boyd in the process. That's 7.30 Eastern, guys. Ben Hicks, Nick Starkle, it's all Chad Morris have two options at the quarterback spot. That is a whistled as an incompletion as it was swung out to Navy on Mitchell. It's now fourth down. You saw where Ben Hicks was career passing leader at SMU. Harkens back to when Chad Morris was there running his offense. It ended up being more compelling than what I think was probably a more talented quarterback and Nick Starkle, a guy that had his season cut short a couple of years ago at Texas A&M due to injury and then never was able to win that starting job back. Goes to Arkansas. Ended up going with Ben Hicks, a guy who knows Chad Morris's offensive system. Slade Bolden gets a chance to return this punt. Eisler with a good one. It goes over his head. Roll dead inside the 10 yard line. 64 yards for the punter for New Mexico State on a warm September Saturday in T-Town. On a it is always a good time, and I'm sure this week we might talk a little bit about that punishment that Coach Saban had from Miss Terry for that unsportsmanlike last last week. He had to run 20 minutes on the treadmill, and I'm starting to think, Taylor, that when Stinch is late to our meetings, we enforce that same penalty on him. Nope. 20 minutes on the treadmill. Yeah, that's cool. I got a veto stamp too, though. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I was early to several other meetings, yeah. so we, that offsets the late meetings. We asked, our, we, we asked our producer, Tom Schofield, and he, he said that absolutely is incorrect, that if you show up 30 minutes early for one conference call, that does not make up for right. the tardiness in the other. It's like a cell phone plan. It's rollover minutes. One counts towards the other. And I've got that in black and white. It's in the contract. Stinch's gasser days are over. It looks like Jemias Williams is okay. The junior from Wilmington, North Carolina, New Hanover High School, great Tar Heel State. Thinking about those people in Wilmington too as the hurricane came, Hurricane Dorian came through the coast where Jemias is from. Yeah. 600 total yards now for Alabama. Robinson, who had that 74-yard touchdown run, plows ahead for a couple. In fact, people affected by Hurricane Dorian, your donation will support Red Cross preparation, response, and recovery efforts in the United States and the Bahamas. Go to www.redcross.org slash ESPN or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to donate now. Give as much as you can, especially for those people down in the Bahamas. Very difficult week. So tied seven of twelve on third down today. Back to Robinson, and throw it out there to Mechi, and Mechi's met in the backfield by Jonathan Hood. It's fourth down. Good job by Hood, fighting off a block and making the open field tackle. Force the punt. Mexico State out there still fighting, scratching, clawing. Coach Saban will get ready for the SEC opener with the Gamecocks next Saturday. Alabama has won 15 straight SEC road openers. That is when their first game of the conference slate is on the season. 15 in a row. O.J. Clark 
with the fair catch. New Mexico State back on offense for the Gamecocks and the Tide next week. On an all, -new all the SEC flags outside Bryant-Denny Stadium, including South Carolina's. Alabama and South Carolina haven't played a lot recently. Played in 2009. Last time they played was nine years ago. The Gamecocks had one of the biggest wins in program history, knocking off Alabama 35-21. to 21. Alshon Jeffrey and Steven Garcia at the games of their life that day. Marcus Lattimore on that team right, as well. As will be three Matt Romero now in at quarterback. And New Mexico State running down the field. That's Josh Foley, the running back, with a big game for the Aggies. That's a 22-yard run to back up tailback. Well, South Carolina's schedule this season. That's a real peach, huh? What are you talking about? You just lost your starting quarterback. Had a great day today versus Charleston Southern with the freshman in there, Ryan Helinski. Looked really good. They reshuffled their offensive front. They got a lot to fix yet. A lot of ground to gain, though, given what they've got coming to visit next week with this bunch out of Tuscaloosa. They will definitely have their hands full. And make no mistake, that game's personal to the fans because they've been hearing about it for nine years from South Carolina fans. Say, hey, remember the last time we played you? And Alabama fans say, hey, remember all the national championships we've won since we played that game? They are tired of hearing all game talk, game talk talk in the last nine years. Saban will try to get his first win in williams Bryce Stadium. The only stadium he doesn't have a conference win in, correct? Right. They've expanded, new facilities. Very real chance. He's certainly going to get an opportunity to check that box, and there aren't many that are unchecked given his 13 seasons here at Alabama and has kind of rewritten what the standard is in college football today. And we talked about the turnover. We talked about the young faces. They hemorrhage talent every year to the NFL. Ten NFL draft picks this past season, second only to the 2018 draft, and they had 12 guys taken. You just turn over your coordinators every year, and yet still field one of the best, if not the best team in all of college football year in and year out. Eli Anderson gets up there almost a first down, fourth and short. How about that? I mean, that's just... Well, in, in, in the last couple of years, 10 players drafted last year, the stench. They've had 29 in the first, 45 in the first two of those 87 draft picks in the Saban era. It's amazing. And, and just to kind of put an exclamation point on that, how many guys they had drafted his first year? Zero. 2007, he wasn't as if he inherited a full cover. Zimmerman Brown from 43. And it's 62 to 10 as the Aggies cut the deficit to 52 here in the fourth quarter at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama pays tribute to all those drafted. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. Part of that list. CJ Mosley as well. CJ Fluker. There's three of the 87 picks in the Saban era. And they have over 60 that are still on NFL rosters. Most of any program. Back to the studio. Let's get an update with Dari. All right, guys, there are six SEC teams, or games, I should say, coming up. Seven teams to play since Arkansas Ole Miss play one another. Bo Nix getting ready for game number two of his freshman season. Game number one ended well for him. Tulane Auburn will be on ESPN2 later. Okay? I think that guy's going to be cheering for Tulane. What do you think? I don't know. See, that, that outfit makes more sense given the temperature today. The other one, multiple layers and a hat. Like a felt fedora? I don't know. That just is that one of the turnover chains that he's got? He's got the old school logo too. Turnover hat band. Dylan Robinson has a 74-yard touchdown run in this game. Goes ahead. Am I crazy to think Tulane, who's an improved team the last couple years, might give Auburn a game tonight? Uh, you know, it's hot up here, buddy. You're not buying. I don't know, man. 
look at, and Auburn with the true freshman and Bo Nix. Let's be real. Uh, they did not play well in the first half. Oregon did everything they could to keep Auburn in that game, especially on the scoreboard. Fumble going in, missed your touchdown catch, and then a missed field goal. But uh, Bo Nix, he might be one of those guys that just has the magic to find ways to win. That big hit by Kamate Kofi. Fourth quarter still playing hard. Protect yourself at all times. Almost got there right as the handoff was being performed. Hold your breath if you're on that Alabama sideline for the true freshman. And as you mentioned earlier, took one to the house on his first touch, only his third touch in his young Alabama career. Made by Giles Amos, the senior tight end. It'll set up a fourth down. Can we go back to the it's hot up here comment translation? Taylor, I disagree. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> saying you got to push the fluids. Paul. I think Auburn will win the game. I just think Tulane with the triple option that they run sure. could yeah. pose a threat tonight. I don't know that it's Army Michigan type situation, but of course Auburn is the the last opponent in the regular season for the Crimson Tide. We'll go through that schedule here in just a moment. at the 33-yard line. So next week at the Gamecocks, Southern Miss here at home. What do you think is the most difficult regular season test for Alabama this year? Well, it might not happen. We just talked about Texas A&M, so that's what I was saying. But you see November 9th, yep. you get LSU, you get them at home. Mississippi State's not what we thought. I don't think they'll be what they were a season ago where they certainly gave Alabama offensively more than they wanted. And then as you're saying, you know, who knows, by the end of the year, in the Iron Bowl, maybe Auburn's got it figured out. And Bo Nix is contributing more broadly in that running game and they get it figured out. Guys, I think oh. one of the more interesting questions too is, is this going to be one of the more difficult years for Nick Saban, just knowing how much youth that's on that team and looking at that schedule too. I mean, they've looked good today, but this is nowhere near the competition they're gonna face in the SEC. I mean, do you guys think that this might be a down year for Alabama standard? Well, I think it's a great question, especially about their defense, Alyssa, and the depth that they have. They cannot afford any more injuries. And already Moses and McMillan, your linebacker core, out for the season. They've had significant injuries in the last couple of years, but their depth has been so strong. I'm not sure that they can, Pete Golding and Nick Saban can afford those kind of injuries. This year's Romero runs past the 50-yard line. They're relying on some fresh faces as true freshmen, and no disrespect to Duke or New Mexico State. Sure. How are those guys going to fare when they play the Aggies and play the LSU Tigers? Well, and you know what? By then, they're no longer freshmen. You know, it's a technicality. You hear all these coaches say that, and there's some validity to that, is that you know, you've got playing experience. Now, the challenge is, do you see defensive coordinator Pete Golding there making sure that those guys – aren't reverting back to things that they could get by with as high school players while they're trying to be starters in the Southeastern Conference. And it's easy for that to happen. You know, you flip into survival mode as a player and you revert back to old habits. They may be bad habits. You know, we mentioned Pete Golding was talking about Christian Harris and the fact that he played defensive back and wide receiver. The good part about him now being an inside linebacker is that he's got no bad habits to fix. It's not like he played linebacker poorly before he didn't play linebacker and so it's a clean slate he's a guy that's getting out there and yeah he's learning on the job right now he's the Mac linebacker in there for Shane Lee and he's getting much needed reps but you see where he would have ranked number six athlete not linebacker not defensive back athlete in the ESPN 300 as a backup tailback for New Mexico State, and he moves the chains again. And Golding clearly impressed Nick Saban. He's at UT San Antonio, as you said earlier, as a defensive coordinator. And Bo Davis, who used to coach here, 
told Coach Saban about him, came to interview for the job, and Coach Golding spent six hours interviewing with Coach Saban and was offered the job that, na that night. The, the language he speaks is clearly the Saban language. Well, what was fascinating, too, about that story was it was, I think it, it, the meeting at least was abbreviated because Coach Saban had to leave for a dance recital for his granddaughter. So once again, Miss Terry influencing things. Right. But, and obviously his love for his granddaughter, but six hours on the board and Pete Golding mentioned, he said, you know, after a while I realized, wait a minute, he's asking me questions on how I would defend an offense. And it occurred to him, this is Clemson's offense. And so you just think, Coach Saban doesn't waste any time, right? So here he is, he's, he's taking a look at a guy who he might want to bring on. And it just so happens he's wanting to see how he would defend an offense that he was going to be coaching against. And also evaluating whether or not he wanted to hire Pete Gold. <laughs> Eli Anderson with the catch inside the 25 yard line. First down for New Mexico State. I think all of those choices that he's made in the last year and a half have been to compete against Clemson, compete against the best teams in the country, and he's made a lot of changes this offseason with seven new assistant coaches. Brian Baker now the defensive line coach. Charles Kelly, the now coaching the safeties, former Florida State and Tennessee assistant, and Sal Sinceri is back again, coaching the outside linebackers. Watch Coach Golding watch this defense on a first and 10. Coach Saban watching right next to him. He doesn't look happy. He doesn't like the way New Mexico State's moving this football. Hands on the hips. You see Coach Golding. Looks like he's lassoing something and then casting what looks like a topwater lure of some type, probably maybe a balsa wood. Hmm. What was the kind that Cash Daniel was using? Uh, they're like Floppers. handmade. Yeah, something like the flop water, top water, or something like that. They've been trying to get some personnel, personnel changes there late. He's ahead to the 16-yard line. As you can imagine apprenticing under a defensive mind like Nick Saban. And even right now, so in the SEC right now, you've got three former defensive coordinators that are now head coaches. All three of them, incidentally, in the SEC East. Will Muschamp from his time at LSU. You see Jeremy Pruitt up in Tennessee, now a head coach, and of course, Kirby Smart, the head coach at the University of Georgia, thought to be maybe the closest contender to Alabama here in the conference. Certainly proven to be a very close proxy the last two times they've met, but still short. How about a shout out to this kid here, Josh Foley, and the way that he's been running in the fourth quarter. Redshirt freshman from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Foley with 51 yards rushing a day. He'll never forget running in Bryant Denny Stadium. The rest of the team just has 42 yards. Camaro to the end zone, incomplete. Throw that to Navion Mitchell with 126 left. New Mexico State came in here. They're going to get what they wanted. They're going to get close to two million for having made this trip. Seems like they will finish this game largely intact. From an injury standpoint, you get Roy Lopez back, your best defensive player. Did not play in this game at all. Yvonne Ferguson as well. End around to Drew Dan. Dan is shoved out of bounds just shy of the goal line. Josh Job forced him out. It'd be first and goal. And a chance to put it in the end zone one more time. So a lot of folks were closely watching the field goal attempt earlier. Now, of course, opportunity to pad their scoring in this game to tighten the margin. 12th play of the drive for the Aggies. Anderson is stoned at the two.
picks up a first down. And, you know, we talked about earlier, Pete Golding standing alongside Nick Saban. Neither look very enthused about the way this series was unfolding. And this is why. You want those guys to get in there and get reps. You also want them to earn their way off of the football field. Instead, the Aggies had other things in mind. Romero, he's not going to get there. Daniel Wright, the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, the first one to him. Second and goal. Situational football. You bow your necks. You finally slow this drive down. Romero moving the football down the field. And as you mentioned, guys contributing at running back as well. There's 25 seconds to go in the game here. And they still don't have a play called. They do have all three of their timeouts. I think they'd like to get out of here with a score before this one ends. And this might be the last play of the game with the way that this is going. You see Coach Saban, finally. he wants a timeout. Yeah, Coach Saban will call a timeout. We realize they've got, looks like they've got 12 on the field. They had a late substitution. Coach Saban comes out there and says, let's talk about this. Okay, I have Second and goal for New Mexico State. Eight seconds to go in the game with the ball at the two yard line. Coach Saban calls timeout with eight seconds left because he had 12 men on the field. Still trying to coach this defense and keep the Aggies out of the end zone. Let's see if number 22, Jalen Armour Davis makes a play right here. He bats the ball down from the quarterback. This red shirt freshman from Mobile, Alabama by way of St. Paul's Episcopal School. What are the odds? Didn't you go to St. Paul's Episcopal I School? I may have spent 13 years of my life Interesting. on Dogwood Lane. Here comes Jalen Armour Davis right on cue. All you gotta do is ask. Comes on that edge pressure, gets a pass deflection. Third and goal, four seconds left. Romero, too high, ball game over. The Crimson Tide when it's 62 to 10. Alabama has won 84 straight versus unranked opponents. That is the longest streak in FBS history. Tua throws three touchdown passes, runs for another. Jerry Judy with three touchdown catches. Coach Saban and Alyssa. Coach, your defense only allowed 10 points today, but you had to call a timeout with 10 seconds left to go. How would you evaluate their performance on the day? Well, we had a lot of players in there. We had 12 guys on the field because we're going from nickel to dime and they late, late sub. So just experience of the players being able to do it. But we played a lot of players. A lot of the twos didn't play as well as we'd like for them to, but a good experience for them. So if they have to play down the road, it'll help them. I know going into this game, you said you wanted to see your offense come out and have a cleaner start. Were you pleased overall with their offensive execution? Uh, you know, we got sloppy after the first couple of drives. So, you know, I'm never pleased. I'm not disappointed, but I'm not pleased. So we got a lot of things to work on. We got to work on trying to get better. Thanks, Coach. Headed to Columbia, South Carolina to exact some revenge on the Gamecocks next Saturday afternoon. Home opener, big success for the Crimson Tide. Let's send you to our SEC Network Studios.